did you seek a second opinion at any stage? Uh, yes, we did. Uh, the neurologist, when Pat uh, had her fall and we saw one straight away, uh, sent us to a neurosurgeon in Cambridge, excellent person, Mr. Coronos, and we saw him in moderately quick time. Uh, we feel that pressing to do so was helpful, and uh, he gave us uh, very good advice, uh, we think, and that was that uh, Pat had to choose herself about neurosurgery because it was a marginal decision, and uh, he gave us the pros and the cons. They were straightforward, and if you wish, I can explain those in a moment. But uh, at the end of the time, we felt that it would be very helpful to get a second opinion, not because we weren't confident in what he said. We had a lot of confidence in him, but we felt that it was wise, given the seriousness of what was going to happen potentially, would be to get a second opinion. And we asked him whether he would mind. He was extremely supportive, uh, which we found very encouraging. And so we got a second opinion, and we did that through Cavanoma Alliance, because they had an arrangement with Mr Kitchen at the National Hospital that he would do that. And we did that through our GP, who was very supportive. We have an excellent GP for Pat. Uh, and so the consequence, of the upshot of all of that was that we went down to London to see Mr Kitchen. Mr Kitchen's... Uh, uh, understanding of what had happened to Pat was very similar to Mr. Corollas, very satisfactory, uh, and we had confidence in both of them, and indeed we've kept them both informed about everything that's gone on, uh, because that's been such a good experience for us. In the end, we uh, decided to uh, work with Mr. Kitchen, not because of lack of confidence in Mr. Corollas at all, uh, but uh, we had to make a choice one way or the other. Mr. Kitchen's advice, as Mr. Corollas had been, was that we should wait and see what was the upshot, whether Pat's uh, enlarged cavernoma would diminish in size or not. And so we uh, waited, and we waited six months, had another brain scan, went to see Mr. Kitchen again, and his advice was that nothing had changed, it hadn't, uh, it hadn't shown any sign of recovery and he was marginally in favour of going ahead with surgery. But nonetheless, it was our choice, and having to make that choice was extremely difficult. Uh, it was uh, very scary. We had no idea about what brain surgery really meant. Indeed, our thoughts of it were much scarier than in the event it turned out to be. And so the idea that one would go and have one's brain opened up and operated on uh, and whether one really needed it was a real uh, difficult uh, question for us. And I can explain that a little bit more if, uh, if you would like.